Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunga Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. Today, I want to kind of break down like why I feel like Anthony Davis has been struggling this entire year. And... I think one of the main reasons is simply because like it's not really have it doesn't really have to do with anything like on court i just feel like he's like very content with like where he is in life you know like he has a max contract he plays for the la lakers he's a top two option and he just won a championship i feel like anthony davis he given simply i feel like it's because like he's not one of those guys like a lebron james or a Kobe Bryant or a Luka Doncic who's like expected to win a championship every single year so that kind of I feel like that might play into you know as to why he might not always have his foot on the gas I don't know if that's a stretch or not but it's not I think the injuries have definitely derailed him this year and on top of the fact that you know they didn't have much of an offseason we stated in you know previous episodes last season and this season had a separation of 57 days so he probably didn't really get much of a vacation and everything and then on top of that like i said like he's dealing with that calf strain the tendinosis and everything he's been trying to you know monitor that and everything and make sure that you know he's going to be 100 percent healthy for the postseason but i mean we saw how he performed in game one against the phoenix suns in the first round and it wasn't pretty i mean he shot what five or 16 from the field had 13 points 0 for two from three and he you can tell, like, just by watching his press conferences and everything, he just doesn't seem very motivated. And it, yeah. is, I, I mean, Greg, what do you think? Yeah, like, when I watched his press conference yesterday, I was, like, I was very shocked. He was just like, okay, yeah, I have a bad game. It's my fault. But it wasn't like – he, like, took initiative, but it was still, like, the way he said it was passive. And then he then he explained, like, LeBron got going with eight points, knocking down a couple of threes. Drummond was getting clean up buckets. And then he was like, I felt like I got lost in the offense. And I feel like that's been the, it's been like that the whole year. He feels like he's been getting lost in the offense. But you're Anthony Davis. People, people talk to you about being a top five player. My biggest thing that I'm going to be saying this whole episode is assert your dominance. Assert your dominance in the game. You should not be getting bullied by DeAndre Ayton yesterday. He's pushed you out to the three-point line. You're not getting to your spot. I mean, I want him to be aggressive. I mean, just two weeks ago, he gave 42 on DeAndre Jordan's head. So be assertive. Be go out and be aggressive. Get downhill. I like I do like when he takes jump shots, but when he's too jump shot happy, that's when he starts fading away from the basket. He only ta- he jab steps once and he doesn't he doesn't jab step and go right by the per- right by his man. He jab steps and just takes a takes a contested tough shot from the mid range. I want to see Anthony Davis going forward inserting his dominance. Call for the ball early. You got to get touches. As a big man, you have to get touches. So I think he has to he has to be more assertive in this offense. And another thing is like it's not and it's not all on Anthony Davis' fault either. I think Frank Vogel plays a part too because I think Phoenix Suns their small ball lineup we talked about it nicely it was effective yesterday. Right. So I think he has to be willing to play the five or or Drummond can't play at all. I don't think Drummond can play this series for yeah. Anthony Davis to really be effective. But nicely, what are you thinking off the points I just made? Yeah, I mean. It- we go back to that Rockets and Lakers series last year. I mean, JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard, they didn't get much playing time. And it was because, like, that was a series more so for, you know, smaller guards and, you know, players like Anthony Davis. But, I mean, as far as, like, him getting lost in the offense, I feel like that's because of the personnel around him. Like, Andre Drummond, I've made it clear that, you know, I don't really like him on the Lakers. I would have much rather had a Blake Griffin, to be honest with you, because he, he wouldn't get in the way of Anthony Davis and everything. And on top of that, I feel like he has to do a little bit more of the dirty work like last year you know he could rely on a Dwight Howard to you know bang in the post and you know defend other big man top tier guys like um Jokic or Joel Embiid but this year Anthony Davis he kind of has to take on that load and given the fact that you know he's dealing with so many injuries I mean he basically has no legs right now it's going to be a little bit tough for him to really operate and you know be productive on a nightly basis so I feel like that plays a huge part in as to why he hasn't been great this year but ultimately I really feel like his mentality is just not in the right place right now like you said like he's very monotone on the court and he just isn't you know that same old Anthony Davis that we know and love I mean even it he can I don't think that you know it's a problem with him playing like 
the power forward or anything because I mean he was a power forward in um not a power forward. I, I don't have a problem with him playing center. Yeah. Or power forward essentially. I think you know as long as the bigs won't get in his way, I think he'll be fine like you think you date back to those New Orleans Pelicans days. He he had, you know, a field day playing with Boogie Cousins and everybody. It didn't, you know, it wasn't very tough watching it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I just don't understand why Anthony Davis hasn't, like, been as motivated to, you know, come back and repeat and everything. Yeah, he's. I feel like he's not even the same vocal leader. Like, last year he was calling out people like, our defense got to be better. We have to step up. He's calling out LeBron, calling out his teammates. Like, I'm not seeing that assertiveness that he even had last year. And then his plus minus yesterday was the worst he's ever had since he's been in the NBA. Like, that is that is not – that's not what we want out of your co-star. Like, we want Anthony Davis to help. LeBron we want when LeBron because LeBron I mean he was passive he wasn't really looking he wasn't going downhill I think yesterday was a perfect opportunity for Anthony Davis to insert his dominance into the game because the Lakers needed that right and and it's it's like DeAndre Ayton he's an improved defender I would guess but you're Anthony Davis at the end of the day. I think exactly. that's a perfect matchup for you. You know what I mean? But yeah, I mean, and he, I, because I feel like now he gave DeAndre Ayton so much confidence, so much confidence. I mean, he was, I mean, what the Suns did with DeAndre Ayton was what the Lakers should have done with Anthony Davis. I mean, getting him involved in the offensive end early. I mean, uh, Ayton was moving his feet. I mean, he was doing everything on the defensive end that gave him conf- confidence on the offensive end. So they, right. the Lakers I, need to establish Anthony Davis in the offense as well. Yeah, I think a part of that is Frank Vogel as well. Like, yeah. he he's had some questionable like rotations. I, I mean, they looked at Taylor Horton Tucker a little bit yesterday. I thought I thought last not last year. I thought you know they should have looked at Kuzma a little bit more. I mean, he hasn't really been like phenomenal this entire year, but he has given them pretty good minutes and everything like on both sides of the floor. And then on top of that, like I just don't feel like this is a series for Andre Drummond or anybody like that. Uh Mark Gasol, he he definitely won't be suiting up that much either this year, but I think AD plays really well when their lineup is like a KCP, LeBron, him, Montrezl Harrell, and then probably another 3 and D guy or like an Alex Caruso. I think that's one of their best lineups. But when you throw like, you know, Andre Drummond out there and then it's, you have Wesley Matthews who has kind of been spotty all year. He hasn't really been great for you. He's been locking up a lot on the defensive side of the ball, but offensively he just, hasn't been too relevant i think that kind of hurts the lakers overall to a certain degree i mean we talked about you know lebron being very passive like yeah. he wasn't very assertive or anything and hopefully you know they can kind of counter all of these things in game two that'll come up on tuesday and everything but i mean i really don't know how you know the lakers are going to be able to compete with the suns if they don't have any type of motivation no urgency and no grit on the defensive side of the ball because essentially their offense is their defense and i think yeah. since they weren't able to get it going on the defensive side of the ball i mean they're the number one team on that in that aspect in the entire nba i think that hurt their offense to a certain degree yeah i totally agree and then another point i want to bring up AD wasn't even getting double teamed. So I think once he inserts his dominance, they're going to have to double AD. And you know what that does nice? But I mean, I think it's because... It opens up the floor for everybody else. I think it's the spacing, though. Like, Andre Drummond is just always in the way. I mean, you know, he looked... He he was, you know, he was, like, jump shot happy even without Drummond in the game at times. But it's really Drummond. I'm just not a fan of that lineup, (laughs) man. Like, Yeah, I don't like that lineup either. And then he doesn't finish well at the rim or anything. Like, he bobbled a, a bunch of passes and everything. Like, I'm just not a fan of Andre Drummond, to yeah. be honest. Oh, uh, yeah, I totally agree. I think they're going to have to match up small ball against the Suns because that's what was working yesterday. Right. I, I, w- I would campaign for Montrezl Harrell to get more minutes, to be honest. And yeah, I know he he's not a great. Yesterday. Yeah, I know he's not a great defender. But, I mean, DeAndre Ayton, I don't think he's going to be too t- tough of a t- uh, task to handle. And they're not. it's not like they're going to leave him on an island or anything. It's going to be like a zone type of defense, like help side and everything. But... When it comes to, you know, Frank Vogel making these adjustments, they were getting killed in the paint all day. And then I don't understand why they were switching everything because I don't feel like this team really has the personnel to switch, especially against, you know, a Phoenix Sun roster that they shoot the three ball well. But it was weird because they were killing them inside in the paint and everything. But once again, that's that all falls on Anthony Davis and Andre Drummond and Montrezl Harrell to a certain degree at the end of the day. So 
I just feel like the Lakers have to clean that up. But I mean, what, what are your last points on? My last point is when I watched back the film of that game, it was a lack of communication. All those double screens that Devin Booker was coming off of and he was hitting those mid-range shots, they weren't talking. You could clearly see they were not talking or they would have been, they would have contested those shots a lot easier. They would have been, the rotations would have been better and tighter. Um, and it goes back to Anthony Davis. The shots that he was taking, he wasn't going downhill. I thought he was fading away too much. And uh, yeah, and Andre Drummond was being was clogging up the paint too. And the lack of adjustments from Frank Vogel. There's a lot of things that played into why they played so bad yesterday. And I'm I'm looking forward to them cleaning that up because they need to, or it will be bad. Yeah, and I don't think they're going to be as effective on the offensive side of the ball as far as like Phoenix coming into game two because you know. Chris Paul, he's a little bit crippled. Like, he suffered a shoulder contusion. Typically, that's an injury where it takes, like, either a few days to heal to some weeks. So, uh, we don't know, like, the information on that entirely just yet. But hopefully, you know, Chris Paul will be healthy and everything. But I would like to see the Lakers, you know, come out with a better defensive game plan and, you know, just play hard. Because Schroeder, he was also somebody that really struggled last um, night. And I just feel like the Lakers, man, like they have to they have to address some of these issues, man. Like Schroeder, he he has to figure out how he can defend in the pick and roll. And then they have to I think they need to definitely double Devin Booker heading into game two and just make somebody else beat you. Because once again, Chris Paul, he's going to be a little bit, you know, lackadaisical, given the fact that his shoulder is going to be injured. So. I just think the Lakers, they have to come up with a better game plan. But at the end of the day, I've said it in previous episodes, Anthony Davis has to be the best player on his team in order for them to win a championship. Exactly. But let us know what you guys think in the comment section. We appreciate you guys tuning in to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. It's now episode 41. If you're new to the YouTube channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on post notifications. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a nice little review and a five-star rating. But aside that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King, and we out. We out.